Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm Molly Gill. I'm FAM's Vice President of Policy. Thank you so much for being here today. Let's hear it for these members of Congress who are supporting criminal justice reform, huh? Yeah. They don't get enough love. Let's hear it. All right. All right. The one I'm about to introduce to you now almost needs no introduction whatsoever. This is the place where mandatory minimum sentences go to die. Representative Bobby Scott from the great district of Six of Virginia down in Norfolk is here today with us. We are so happy he's here. And, um, you know, I just have to say that every time I get a little bit down working on criminal justice reform, I think about Bobby Scott, who's been doing this so much longer than I am, who has so much faith, so much hope, so much optimism, and never quits. And I think I can go another day. And I know he's going to give you the same feeling. So let's hear it for Congressman Bobby Scott. Thank you, Molly. Give Molly a round of applause for all the work that she does with FAM. Is FAM out here? Anybody here from FAM? Anybody here from the Justice Action Network? Yay! Prison Fellowship? American Conservative Union? Freedom Works? Cut 50? Can Do Foundation? There are a lot of people out here who are interested in common sense criminal justice reform, but the, quite the first step we have to make is to agree that we're going to follow the evidence and research and not the simple-minded slogans and sound bites. Those simple-minded slogans and sound bites have got us the mass incarceration, they've got us the racial disparities, they've got, they're fighting a war, a simple-minded war on drugs, they, they're committed, they, they violate evidence and research time and time again. But we know that if we just follow the evidence and the research, we can not only reduce crime, we can also save money. So who's against that? Unfortunately, the slogans and sound bites have been winning the day, and we got to turn, turn that around. And instead of choosing slogans and sound bites, we, can cho we ought to choose the evidence and research. And that's why I introduced the Safe Justice Act, which is all evidence and research. It starts with crime prevention, evidence-based investments that will reduce crime and save money, bail reform, which will, uh, which will make sure that we're doing a risk-based assessment, not a wealth-based assessment, uh, police uh, training to make sure that the police are using the best techniques, avoiding the un unfortunate uh, deaths, uh, brutality, make sure they're well trained. Then when you get to court, make sure you have the uh, evidence-based uh, courts like drug courts and mental health courts so that people get the best shot. You're dealing with the underlying basis. And when you get to sentencing, get rid of the mandatory minimums that only load up the prisons and do nothing to reduce crime. And when they get to prison, we need more services in the prisons. We know that people who get better education and job training in the prisons are less likely to come back. We save more money than we spend by reducing future incarceration. And then when they get out, make sure they have second chance so they have an opportunity to get a job and don't come back to prison. We know we can do that if we make the right choice. So we need to, we're counting on you to, to pressure your legislators to get them to agree that we're going to go by evidence and research to make sure that they do the right thing, that we can reduce crime and save money, and with your help, they're going to start making the right choice. Thank you very much. <laughs>